now we're going to do some more tools in SketchUp. Okay, so let's open up SketchUp, bring up a new window here, and I want to show you how you move in between QGIS and SketchUp, which is a really important functionality for urban design. So how do you go about importing a shape file into, let's say you have your building footprints for Bridgeport and you want to, for your neighborhood, and you want to bring them into SketchUp and create a three-dimensional model of your whole neighborhood. How do you go about doing that? One thing that's, that's a little tragic is that SketchUp and GIS don't really get along with each other that well. I think they're in some kind of fight. Uh, but uh, there are workarounds, luckily. I'm going to introduce you to the wonderful world of extensions in QGIS, which is kind of like plugins. Basically, they are plugins. So what you need to do is find where you can uh, locate a plugin for what it is you want to do and install it in SketchUp. So I'm going to open up a browser here. And um, what you're going to look for is a script that you can use um, and install as an extension in SketchUp. And a really, there's different locations for these. Uh, but one that I found that is, you know, what I want to do with importing a shape file into SketchUp, what I found is that we need something on the Spirix code website. So here's the URL, sites, Google dot com slash site slash Spirix. Spirix code slash code. No, of course it didn't find it. Just go ahead and type in Spirix code. There we go. Now here we have a website of various scripts that people have written to do various functions in um, SketchUp, among other things. And these are called, in SketchUp terms, these are called Ruby plugins, but you don't really need to worry about that. Um, and if you scroll down here, the one that we're after is called the Shapefile Importer. Okay, so it's called Spirix Shapefile Importer.rb, and RB stands for the Ruby script. So you go ahead and click on Download and you get that downloaded. And now the slightly tricky part is that you need to make sure that you're putting that Ruby script in the right place on your laptop so that, you're, so that SketchUp will recognize it and be able to um, load it for you when you open SketchUp. So on a Mac, what you want to do is you want to have it in the user's library application support folder. And what my students have found is that you can't just go into your finder window and locate that folder. You have to use the go menu. So you do connect to go to folder on a Mac. And you see that it, you know, I've already searched this out. I know where my application support folder is. And I say go, and I get to SketchUp 2017, and I go to my plugins, and here are my RB scripts loaded in the right folder. Now the reason Mac does that is they don't want, they don't want to make it easy for people to manipulate and work with certain folders. So they keep certain folders kind of a little bit under wraps. There's just sort of an extra wall you have to go through to get to them. But this is the, uh, you know, again, in Finder, click on Go and connect to server and get to where you need to go, which is users, and then it's my name for users, and then library, and then application support, and then, the, then you get to SketchUp. Okay, so my plugin, my Spirix shapefile importer is in the right place. I've downloaded that. 
So now back in SketchUp. Now when I open SketchUp, I have under my extensions, Spirix import shapefile. So that extension won't be there unless you've imported that Ruby script. But it's a really, I promise, it's, it's really worth it to go through that little bit of pain to get that extension so that you can do this. So now I'm going to go to my uh, Bridgeport layers. And let me just open up my blocks or a set of blocks. And it gives me this uh, dialog box about import parameters. Just select all the defaults for that um, for now. And uh, it imported a part of my blocks. And I'm going to go to Camera, Standard Views, Top, and Zoom Extents. So those are the blocks from Bridgeport that were just imported. Similarly, I could open up another shapefile. What if we do the buildings this time? Which is a much bigger file. So it takes a little bit of time. There we go. And those are all my buildings. Now, there is a little bit of work to be done to get all of these to line up. I am going to show you how to line these up correctly in future tutorials, but um, right now I'll just show you how to get those loaded. Mm -hmm.